Hey friends, this is Mr. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead and today I'm going to show you how to make 20 pounds of potatoes from the garden last you all winter. Now here I have three bowls with water and a shot of lemon juice each because I'm going to be sorting. These are the potatoes from my garden. And I wasn't feeling well yesterday. I was in a lot of pain, so I sat in my armchair watching TV and peeling taters. And I've, this is almost a five gallon pail full. This is what we got from the garden. And I'm going to be putting the ones I want to can in that bowl, the ones I want to slice to dehydrate in this bowl, and the ones I want to dice to dehydrate in this bowl. I had to go through the pail because most of the ones the, the canning size were on top. Now I've got my canning potatoes there and I'm going to reach down and I got a really nice sized potato and it's sitting nice and flat because I peeled them that way and I'm going to slice up my scallop potato slices. Now you can use a mandolin slicer if you like I just feel I have better control and I do have a slicer for my KitchenAid but you know what I'm doing this kind of as a home economics thing anyway so I want to show you all the different ways you can save your potatoes for winter now you don't have to have a garden to take advantage of the savings you get when you can and dehydrate your own food. If you've got, I'm just going to slice a little bit off the back of this just so I can lay it flat. If you have a dehydrator and you have a canner, uh, a pressure canner, you can take advantage in midwinter, late fall, early fall, I don't know when they go on sale, but sometimes 10 pound bags of potatoes go on sale for 99 cents. And I have had them go on nine, for 99 cents. Pretty sure it's one of my videos. Um, I do believe it was my video on um, making your, your own seasoned potatoes for the freezer, right? So if you get an amazing sale of potatoes, 10 pound bags for 99 cents, there's no reason you can't spend five bucks and dehydrate and can all the potatoes you're gonna need for the winter. Unless you want mashed potatoes. Canned potatoes don't mash well. They fry good, they heat up good, but canned potatoes don't mash well and dehydrated, I've never found a good recipe for dehydrating and making instant mashed potatoes. I'm gonna make diced potatoes for soups and stews this winter. Now you gotta be kind of careful about the thickness of the potato that you dice because you do want it to dehydrate properly. That's a little imperfection. We'll just slip right out of there. Looks like a root was wanting to start. This is the lid for my chopper. Well, aren't I silly? Silly me, put it away in the cupboard. Okay, so you don't want them any more than, you know, half to three quarters of an inch thick. I would say even thinner. Let's have a look. Okay, that's about the size. Like a, if you've got a French fry cutter, you can dice up the French fries. Okay, that's about the size you want. All right, I will be back when I have everything. Oh, and you're gonna want a stock pot of water coming to a boil on the stove because we're gonna to have to blanch these. All right, we'll be back when I'm ready for that. I've got my rinsed potatoes. Oh yes, we almost forgot. Four finger pinch of salt. And yes, I am gonna be recycling this for the diced potatoes. And we're just going to dump these in here. Now we're not going to cook them, but we want them to come back up to a boil. And we're going to par cook them for three minutes. 
Yeah, this lid doesn't fit. Okay, these have come up to a boil. And what I'm looking for is, I just want to make sure these are fork tender for three minutes once it comes up to a boil. That's fork tender. Let's strain these. Okay, I've given these a quick rinse in cold water just so I can handle them. And let's get them on these trays. Now you don't want your potatoes touching each other. Even though they're blanched, any little bits that break off, I'm going to throw in my soup bowl because we're going to have potato soup tomorrow. That's one of Papa's favorites. Now they can be kind of touching each other, but you don't want them overlapping. Okay, I'll be back when I have all five of these trays filled. Okay, we're on the last tray, and I don't think all these potatoes are going to fit. So I'm going to have to pull out the Nesco. On goes the lid and it has vents. Okay, all our potatoes are ready. We've got five trays on that dehydrator. This is another tray for my Nesco, but I'm going to wait because I'm going to blanch these. Now again, these are going to be strained and they're going to be dropped into the boiling blanch water and we're going to be brought back up to a boil and we're going to cook these at a boil or a simmer for only one minute because they're not that big. Alrighty then, for the rest of our potatoes, we're going to use the Nesco. Now, I have put the mesh sheet that came with my Nesco on the bottom tray just because any these potatoes might get really small and fall through. It just makes it easier to catch them on the bottom tray. Put a jar over there, dump some on here. Again, you don't want these overlapping or anything like that, but you do want them nice and thick on here. I did rinse these with cold water, but yes, they're still steaming, and I'm throwing them all over the friggin' place. Now, because these pieces are a bit thicker, I'm going to put my last tray of the slices on the bottom. Oh, there's my bird o'clock saying it's three, so it's about time I went and phoned Daddy and seen how his day's going. Okay, I'm going to put this in the pantry, set the lid on it, and set it for 135 degrees, which is the fruit and vegetable setting. Right here on the Nesco are the diced potatoes. Now, um, the ones on the top are already starting to dry. But mind you, the heat in the, and the element, to be fair, is in the top here. I uh, put my camera down so I could show you the bottom tray. As you can see, already the slices on the bottom, as well as the pieces on the top, are already well on their way to being dry. No rotation necessary. And look, I had four trays on here, didn't have to rotate a thing. These are probably going to wait till later today or tomorrow because they have to be par cooked for canning. And this is going to be strained and put in the crock pot with some chicken broth and a couple of onions and that's tomorrow night's supper. Okay, so in this crock pot I'm going to put one carton of no salt added. Oh my god, I thought this was organic. Oh for god's sakes I grabbed the wrong one. Oh well, waste not, want not. There's no salt added, and we're going to put in the one liter carton, or the one quart, of chicken broth. Now my mom, when we were really broke, as a, when I was a kid, she would make this out of potatoes, onion, and water. Potatoes, onion, water, and skim milk. Okay, so into that we're gonna add our approximately three cups of potatoes and an equal amount of onion. Okay, I can't find my lid because it's in the dishwasher. It's, this is how often I use my crock pots. So I'm just going to put this lid on this and it's on low and that's going to cook until tomorrow. Now on with canning our potatoes. I have a half a stock pot of water boiling here with a wire rack in the bottom only because I don't want my potatoes to sit on the bottom. I'm going to see if I can, how many of these potatoes I can get in here. Whoa! Be very, very careful folks. 
Well, it looks like I got them all in. I'm going to cover this and bring it back up to a boil and we're going to cook these potatoes for 10 minutes. Why? Because they are two inches across. So that means we, uh, we are cooking them whole so they have to be cooked for 10 minutes. Okay, these have been cooking for 10 minutes. Our timer is about to go off. So I will meet you at the sink. Now we're going to strain these potatoes. Please be very, very careful, folks. That's what kept them from browning on the bar. Now I'm going to lift this into a clean dish pan and I'm going to start running cold water on them. I want these to cool down some because you don't want them to continue to cook. Here's the water I'm bringing up to a boil to can my to put in with my canned potatoes. People ask me why I don't use the water they were boiled in. You boil them to set the starch. You don't want that starch in your water. And here is my canner, three inches of water and a shot of vinegar to keep my jars from clouding. Here's our washed lids in warm water, our rings. I have six quart jars washed, rinsed and ready. Let's get going. Okay, when it comes to bulky things like potatoes, I like to put some water in the jar first because it makes debubbling easier. Here are our rinsed potatoes. It's a little awkward for me because I'm, I'm, I don't have a whole lot of counter space in this one spot. Yes, my hands are clean. Now I have medium to small potatoes and so I, I kind of try and mix them up in here. Well, that looks like it's just going to be perfect. There we go. Because we put the water in first, we don't have to disturb these potatoes too much. One inch from the top. Always, always debubble, but at this point you just have to go around the outside just to make sure. Teaspoon of salt. Always, always, always wipe your rinse. Clean lid. Fingertip tight and into the canner. This goes. And when I have the rest of these six jars done, we'll be back. It wasn't enough for a full quart, but it was too much for a pint. So I'm just putting it in a full quart jar with water. I don't really worry if this goes to mush. I'm not going to worry about that. I'll just put it in potato soup. Okay, as you know, we've got five full quarts and one that's about two thirds full, but I've filled it for the proper amount of water. Now, folks, I make sure that I wash my lids and the, the rubber rings and everything at least every other canning, if not every canning, to make sure that my equipment is operating as properly as possible. So I'm just going to lock this down. And when this becomes, a, starts spouting a steady stream of steam, we're going to put a timer on it for 10 minutes. Okay, we are spouting a steady stream of steam from our canner. So I'm going to set my timer. For 10 minutes. And we'll be back when the timer goes off. Okay, my timer has gone off. And now I'm going to put my 10 pound weight on it. And when this comes to a jiggle, I'm going to turn it down to just, be, just in between medium and maximum. That's, that's how my stove works. So that we get either a gentle rocking motion or the occasional bubble up. Once we get our first vigorous jiggle, I'm going to start the timing of this for 40 minutes because it's 40 minutes for quartz. Now, if you live a thousand feet or more above sea level, please check the manufacturer's directions for your altitude because your weights and times may change. Look, we have achieved gentle rocking motion. And that's where I get gentle rocking motion on my stove.
Okay, our timer has gone off and not just finished venting. We're going to shut this off. And we're going to shut the canner off. And we are going to let this cool down naturally. What that means is you don't jiggle the weight. You don't wriggle the pot. You don't, for God's sakes, do not try and open it. And please don't plunge it into cold water. The cooling process is part of the canning process. So please, just let it sit until it, it becomes cool to the touch. Okay, our weight has been taken off. Our bobble has popped down. The canner, well, it's hot to the touch, but all intense, for all intents and purposes, the pressure is completely off of this. But it is still hot. So folks, open the lid away from you so you don't get blasted with steam in the face. Okay, this is what I got from that three quarters of a pail of potatoes from the garden. This here is six meals easy. Oh, ping, that's a happy sound. And the, even this one back here that only has a few potatoes in it is still a meal, even if I slice it up and fry it with onions, right? This is four cups, which means this is eight soups or stews, because you only put a half a cup of um, each vegetable into your soup or stew. This is four, yes, I'm gonna say four scallop potato dinners. So we have four, and eight is 12, and six is 18. And that's what I got out of the garden. You don't have to be limited by what you get from the garden. If you've got a canner and you've got a dehydrator, you can take advantage of sales any time of the year at all. This is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead, and that's home economics on potatoes. Also, you're going to want to look in the home economics playlist because I have added other videos, older videos to that, and one of them is making seasoned wedgie fries for the freezer. Take care. God bless.